Okay, well, thank you for joining us, Katya. Um, my first question is, you know, nowadays when you walk around Kiev, um, and particularly the areas where the massacre occurred, it's not immediately obvious that anything happened there. You have to, in a sense, look to find um, physical remnants of the massacre. And even when you discuss it with people, it's not at the forefront of their minds when they think about that time period in Ukrainian history. I'm curious, to what extent was your book part of this kind of larger project to uh, reclaim the memory of that time in Ukrainian history as part of you know, the Holocaust and as part of you know, the Jewish experience during that time? It's very hard to explain, but actually, it's not like a history. You know, if you grew uh, if you grow up in 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 this city, it's a time, it's a part of your uh, childhood. It's a topography of your city, and now you can uh, uh, take a subway and go there uh, by subway. And actually, the whole landscape of Babi Yar it's it doesn't exist uh, 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 because Soviet uh, Soviet regime tried to to. Uh, uh, destroy even a landscape, not only the memory. So it was prohib prohibited to uh, um, to think about this place. So even this place uh, uh, was destroyed as a as a as a landscape. So and now you have this strange place, like uh, with a lot of monuments, uh, partly with a park or even a wood. And on the end, you have the one of the oldest uh, churches in uh, Kiev, Rus. Uh, uh, the 12th century, so and it's a very, very strange place, and it's part of your city. So what, what, uh, how you can deal with this, uh, with this space uh, where 100,000 people were killed? That was a question for me. And with, and with, with the book in particular, it's interesting that you chose to write it in German um, when you're fluent in Russian uh, and you also speak English quite well. Um, I'm interested. Why did you decide to write it in German? Uh, was that a natural thing, or does that have to do with the subject matter? Or yeah, I started to learn German when I was 27, so it's not like very natural, I would say. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's one of the most important things. Uh, uh, I'm interested in this story not because uh, part of my relatives were Jewish, and not because uh, they are some relatives uh, of mine who were killed there. I tried to tell the story as if it was possible for everybody to um, to identify uh, themselves with this place because you know there are no like alien people if they are victims. So uh, as if it would have been possible for a German to write a book as if he is from Jewish family or uh, you know. Uh, for me, it's not like an only Jewish place. It's a common ground of people who grew up there. And actually, it's a, such a just enormous catastrophe, which is um, which is just a heritage of uh, everybody. Um, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. To I, say it very directly, I mean, you, you chose to write in the language of the people who perpetrated the massacre, essentially. Um, and I mean, I'm interested if that... I mean, were you thinking about that when you chose to write the book in, the, in that language? Absolutely, it's one. It was one of the reasons. So it's, it means that uh, for me, all this, uh, mm, uh, all these stories of um, of Babi Yar of Kiev, they're some sort of orphans, you know, like uh, forgotten stories, and not really retold stories. Uh, so I tried to give them for adoption, and in this meaning, it's. Uh, very important to to write in German. Strangely enough, German now is uh, and maybe Germany is one of their uh, most important countries for so-called um, culture of memory. Uh, I think that uh, uh, democratic Germany, uh, endeavors of Germany towards refugees, uh, towards, towards ecology, and many other things, this kind of modern responsibility for the world has to do something with uh, with this whole process uh, of uh, taking responsibility of the guilt on the Holocaust. Um, and uh, if we uh, look at Russia today, we can uh, definitely understand what what's the difference between uh, Germany and Russia in perception of their own history. And actually, uh, Soviet Union was also part of this war and uh, responsible for the Second World War. And this part of the process, this process uh, uh, didn't take place in, in, in Russia, and now we have new wars and all that, you know. So, uh, German in a way, German in a way now is a language of um, of a refugee, of 
not told stories. Uh, I mean, it's something very similar to uh, American literature of 2030s. So uh, German uh, accepts everything. What you say about this culture of memory in particular is quite interesting. And you, you, I think you noted very correctly that Russia does not have a similar kind of culture of memory as it exists in Germany. But in Ukraine, we are seeing something like that at least starting with a lot of people, um, both you and also you know, really people across society, starting to come together to, to you know, kind of undergo these efforts to really remember the not so pleasant parts of that time. I mean, why do you think, that is, why do you think that's happening right now in Ukraine? Uh, it's hard to say if it's happening now because, you know, if you know, um, 91, 92, those years, there were really big meetings in Ukraine and Babi Yar, and uh, all these um, uh, monuments were built in these years. Uh, uh, actually, when it was almost prohibited to, to be there, to, to go there on 29th of September, uh, for many people it was uh, very important to go there. It was, um, um, uh, 66 was the great meeting um, at this place. And actually, when you're reading about uh, this meeting in Babi Yar in year 66 with very important people, with uh, Dzuba and Viktor Nikrasov and even Dovlatov came and... So uh, they were uh, making speeches there, and everything important was already told there, and 10,000 people were standing there keeping silence. So it was really act ex absolutely extreme experience for the people there. But nothing happens afterwards. That's a great problem. Even uh, now in Ukraine, like you have a big ceremonies, so you have um, intellectual books on that subject, but it seems like in the many layers of society, there is no memory. And actually, Babi Yar, it's only a part of this kind of oblivion. We have many myths. And I wouldn't say um, the process uh, the process doesn't exist, you know, but it's just uh, ridiculous in comparison to many countries where people really, the masses of people are dealing with uh, their own history. And I really want to, to, uh, to repeat, it's not only a Jewish place, it's a it's our common ground, it's our common grief, and we have to define this we uh, also through this catastrophe, you know. And um, why now? Um, because actually it's a very peculiar moment in Ukrainian history. We are, we are trying to understand what is Ukraine and what is our common ground and what is our common history. And actually, if we will understand that all these uh, people from different, uh, all these people who inhabit Ukraine is a history of Ukraine, uh, we will manage, you know, if not, I don't know. But I mean, do you think the country is moving in the right direction towards kind of accepting that tragedy is a part of that, you know, tragedy on both sides is, is a part of the history? Do you think that it's more moving towards the path of forgetting? No, it's, it's moving to, uh, towards remembering, but uh, uh, it's only one of the reactions. And I mean, um, memory is only a part of creating of democratic uh, society and uh, there are many uh, many contradictory uh, uh, oh my God, movements in <laughs> thinking through german it's really funny <laughs> for russian speaker yeah and uh, yeah that's what history made with me you know i'm talking uh, to you in english uh, i'm russian speaker but i'm thinking in german and i'm not even an immigrant <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining us, Katya. I appreciate you taking the time.